Fantastic. I'm sorry, Kaz. That was a little too loud, I'm sure, for you. But I am feeling fantastic on this Victory Monday, episode number 66 of Stats Over Politics. I'm Sean Holko alongside my guys, Javon Toddy, Kevin Dent, Gary Singh is at work. And so joining us again this week, gentlemen, you guys just heard me shout him out, is none other than then Mr. Kaz Johnson of Kazzy Bear TV, noted Eagles fan. Kaz, thank you for joining us once again. Yeah, man, uh, we we got to do it. Um, it's it's that simple, man. So uh, everybody that's tuning in already sees the title. They know what's going down. And it's just one of them situations where I'm like, uh, you know, you, you can't always talk to talk, man. You got to walk the walk and then just man just let's let's just get to it man let's get to it <laughs> let's get to it Javon how are you feeling was there like something was there like a big was there like a game over the weekend or something like that why is everyone so what's all the hostility here I'm just trying to figure it out I thought it was just a normal Who's hostile? nah was- there there's <laughs> there is no hostility we're probably with two of the chillest Eagles fans out there I thought it was just a normal weekend you know just football and then uh, I, I guess the Niners and Eagles play is, is that what everyone's the the whole talk is about is that what's going on here? <laughs> oh my out. gosh is it the college football uh, playoff that everyone's so worked up about what what, what is it I'm trying to figure yeah. it out Kevin I don't, and I I don't think I don't think about it I don't. I don't think hostility. Hostility is the word. Um, <laughs> some things happen. We're gonna say that some things happen. I. Some things happen. Some words were said, and some things happen. So, yeah. And uh, props. You you guys heard me laughing in, in uh, towards the end of Jay Bond's last response, and it's just because I was about to repost uh, our Instagram teaser. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Stats Over Politics and. Shout out to Kevin, because, you know, I didn't even put this title on it. Kevin was the one that did it. It says episode 66, Cry, Eagles, Cry. So props to you, Kevin. Podcast always comes first, man. Podcast always comes first. We appreciate you for that. that. So, Kevin, you're the only one we haven't heard from yet. Kevin doesn't believe that. If Taz would have came on, it would have been Kevin's funeral. <laughs> and uh, he he messaged me. I'm like, man, we, we both got to take this one, bro. We, we got to, you know, if we really are. The fans that we claim to be, and that just happened. Ten toes down, baby. We got to eat this one. Ten toes down. So we here, most definitely. And we we appreciate both of you for that, uh, especially you, Kaz. No no shade to Kevin, but Kevin was required to be here. Kaz, you you, you 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 were a, you were a guest uh, for us today and last week. And I, I joked last week that you joined us before the game because you didn't have to be here after we handed you guys an L. I didn't think it'd be a 23 point L. Nevertheless, we appreciate you for joining us this week. Again, Kaz to fill in for our guy, Gary, who's at work. Um, and anyway, so guys, let's get right to it here on episode number 66 of stats over politics as the 49ers Kaz said it, you heard the title, you read the title, the 49ers smash the Eagles. On Sunday, uh, the final score was 42 to 19. And so, Javon, I'm going to toss it to you first. 
because wait, other wait, than wait, myself, wait, wait. we have a guest. Star. I follow the rules we of the host, man. Star. You did this last we week. Guest Just follow. John has a master plan, Ty. Just follow the plan. Stop following. Our fellow ego fans here. We need to make sure that they need to get the things that they had off their chest because you know a lot was said. You know, a lot was said. You know, we have predictions kind of come on. We had 38 to 7. We had the Eagles are going to win by double digits. So I just want to know what how they feel, you know, coming well, out of the link and those fellow Eagle fans there and just, you know, all the Eagle fans across the country. I, you, you have, you're speaking for all Eagle fans right now. So we would like oh, to know. Well, then if the that's the case, was. I guess I got to go first. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. But we just want to know what happened. <laughs> When you guys got punched in the mouth. <laughs> Is this you pass me the mic? All right. So, like Toddy mentioned, I am speaking for all of the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, let's 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 take things back a step. We woke up this morning, cut the crust out of my eyes, it was a rough night, and then I look, the standings. How many one <laughs> how many 10 win teams are in the past? I mean, I'm not the best at math, but uh, I believe there's one. one. Okay. All I right. believe. I mean, you guys can fact check me. You know. Yeah, we can. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead and go ahead and fact check us on that. But you know, <laughs> it was supposed to be you know the gauntlet. You know, this is what everyone was looking for it all season. Started off six and zero, oh, where everyone was like, oh, 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 you know, or five and oh, excuse me, five and zero. Oh. Thank you for the correction. Everyone, you know, was routing us, saying that this is the gauntlet. This is what it's supposed to be. So, Cowgirls, W. Patrick Mahomes, better quarterback than Jalen Hurts, W. We got the Madden boy. Everyone says it's better than Jalen Hurts, W. So, coming into this show, when we did the preseason analysis, I said we were going to lose one of these games. I was hoping and praying it wasn't to the Niners, but it is what it is. We're going to be all right. The biggest thing that I took away from this game is we came in and said, we're the NFC champs. They got to beat us. And it started from the jump. Niners ran through the line. Niners wore all black. Well, that's what the caption said. There's only four players, but we can we can title it as Niners wore all black. But first two drives, negative six yards for the uh, Niners. First we, quarter. First quarter. We score, or we don't get two field goals. Niners, next two possessions, go down and get touchdowns. It comes down to execution, fellas, at the end of the day. Like after the Super Bowl, I know everyone was expecting me to come in here, blame the refs, blame A, B, C, and D. It comes down to execution. 12 straight drives before our first drive of this game ended in six. You can take it up as the Niners. You can take it up as Jalen tripping over himself. You can take it up as whatever you may be. Everyone was shitting me pictures of the Quez Watkins pass, saying that it was pass interference. They didn't call it. We have to move on, fellas. That's not the reason we lost this game. Everyone's sending me clips of the Reed Blankenship quote unquote holds. They didn't call it. Ladies and gentlemen, if they would have called it, they still would have scored. It would have just made us more upset. Looking at this from an offensive perspective, you guys came out and said Jalen Hurts beat us with his arm. Every play was cover four. Jalen had nothing but time back there. He had so much time. He is tripping over his own shoes. You guys, we talked about this week one when everyone was talking about Jalen Hurts not putting up the numbers. People were scheming to make Jalen Hurts play against the zone. We're going to take away your first and two option and make you throw the ball to your tight ends. We did not have a single tight end reception this game. That killed us. We had nine runs that weren't from Jalen Hurts. That's unacceptable. We talk in, I come in here week in, week out, talk about our rush game, talk about how efficient our O-line is. What are we going to do if we're going to run it nine times? We just we we came in and we were we were too big play heavy from the jump. We wanted to come in, we wanted to make a stand, all the adrenaline, and it really took until the famous incident of Greenlaw punching our security guard, literally until we got punched in the mouth for the Eagles to want to play with some juice. Everyone screaming, AJ and Warder getting into it, and then the next snap we went for two, and I saw AJ kind of just freak out. I, I knew it was over. You guys are getting into Jalen Carter's head. He's on the sideline crying. We really got wrapped up in the emotion, and it showed. You know, the Niners came out, stayed 10 toes down. So I'm not going to come on here and, and blame A, B, C, and D. It wasn't our best night. I'm sure the four of us, and we can count five of us, including Gary, knew this was going to be a two-round fight, 
and you guys won the first round. So the better team won, and I have no problem saying. All right, Kaz, let's hear from you then. I mean, uh, Kev said it best, man. Like, it's – the the better team won last night. It's, it's that simple. And um, you look at the Eagles, and you know you look at the stats. Um, you look at the Niners, their stats. You can you know you could try to pick. Well, this is the reason why this happened. This is the reason why that happened. But at the end of the day, dude, forty two nineteen. That's an ass whooping. That is that is one hundred and ten percent an ass whooping. And we can talk hypotheticals all day. You know we can do that. But at the end of the day, the 49ers somehow some way, man. They talk to talk and they walk to walk um, to, on a level that as my or as an Eagles fan, for as long as I've been an Eagles fan, I have never seen an ass whooping like that, given the talent of our team. We've got our ass beat when, you know, we've been kind of down bad, guys hurt, whatever. That's happened in the past. But there was literally there was no excuse. Um, there was zero excuse. And uh, they showed up and they stood on business. I mean, 110 percent. What you can't be mad about that as a fan, you just can't. And what I mean is, like, we we know who we are. We're ten, we're ten and two. Um, we're still the best team in the league right now, record wise. And we have Dallas next week. I know Javon's laughing right now. We got Dallas next week. Okay. Um, then we have Seattle. Oh. And then we have New York, Arizona, New York. Okay. To, end the, to, to, to finish the season. To look at what we saw last night and to say that's who we are i'm not i'm not i'm not losing any sleep on that that's not that's not who the eagles are and the 49ers played probably their best game of the season and we played arguably one of our worst and i don't think it's because of what the 49ers did necessarily they came in with a chip on their shoulder and we came in and we were a little too friendly with it and we didn't realize no nah, it's really like that um the players you're seeing it with the players um, you're seeing it when the when the Niners came out, they walked straight through the Philadelphia Eagles whole warm-up, walk through. Like, I mean, it was like they walked through them, like yo, we don't today's not the day. And Philadelphia was a little bit too lackadaisical. So, I mean, if you I look at it like this, when I see when I see a beat down 42-19, and I'm like, okay, you know, it's any given Sunday, we all know that you guys got you know whooped by a couple by a team that you had uh, who do you guys lose to the Bengals, right? You guys lost to the Bengals, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was um, that was that was the round true loss. Yeah, well, that's and that's why I was gonna say that. Go ahead. But, but, but regardless, but regardless, she lost to the Brown or to the Bengals, and it was it was significant. You guys lost. Um, and you know, you look at Dallas losing to Arizona. You look at Kansas City losing to Denver in Week One, losing to Detroit. Who who is very real? But Week One, no one nobody saw that coming. Good teams, unfortunately, they suffer losses like that at some point in the season. It happens every year. It just happens. It just so happened that this was the game that was the NFC Championship rematch. It was a little bit too perfectly plotted out for you guys to win the way you did. And that's why Javon has the smile that he has right now, of course. Um, but, it, I mean, it just is what it is, man. It's it's There's nothing you can say about it. It's an ass whooping. I don't think that in a seven-game series it's going to look like this every time. And a lot of times when it comes to NFL games, and I see beatdowns like this when it comes to good teams. I always look at it from basketball. Seven-game series, who do you think wins that series and how does it look? This ain't how this game's going to pan out in a seven-game series. That's all I'm going to say. I'll take Eagles the loss. Five. I'll take – hey, I'll take the loss. Um, I'll take the hey, ass whooping. I'll take the ass whooping at home. And Debo, I mean, he, he earned a lot of respect for me. Stood on fucking business, period. Devo sure did. And um, Kaz, I, I just wanted to respond to a couple of points that were made before I pass the mic over to Javon. Uh, first thing I would respond to is I disagree that I don't think it was the 49ers best win of the season because or the, their best per, their best performance of the season, because the, this is the 49ers fourth win of the season by 20 plus points. And then in another like four of those games, they won by double digits. And so, like eight out of nine wins, I think, were have been by double digits. And so, anyways, how can those against the number one seed in the NFC? Well, and that and that's the point that I was <laughs> that, that I was gonna say is yes, the the level of talent is pretty impressive. But I mean, the 49ers, they beat the Cowboys by 32 points, and the Cowboys are now, yeah, technically they're the fifth seed in the NFC, but they're the third best team in the NFC. 
record wise when you compare the head to head schedules. And I also just want to say that I thought it was funny how Kevin mentioned the gauntlet that the Eagles have. And he said, I, I didn't want one of those to be one of those losses to be against the 49ers. But Kevin, the same guy who said that the Eagles would win 38 to seven is also the same guy who said that this game wasn't even circled on the schedule for Philadelphia or any Eagles fans. But yet you were looking ahead at this gauntlet thinking to yourself, I don't want one of those losses to be against the 49ers, but yet you didn't circle the game at all. That has nothing make it, make to it do make with sense. that. That Make it make sense. I have to come on here on Mondays and now Fridays and deal with the two of you. I would have. That's the reason I didn't want it to come against you guys. It wasn't because we beat you in the NFC Championship. If you guys would have been fucking Steelers fans, last, last week, week two would have been a game like, all right, we just can't lose to them. We can go one and 16. As long as we don't lose to you guys, I'll sleep at night. That's the only reason it wasn't as big of a deal, but... It was your guys' so, Super Bowl. Last time we played, we walked away with a trophy. So, and I will say this real quick before you go, Sean. Um, you know, you mentioned like you know not the biggest win of the season, you know, but I'm gonna have to disagree with your disagreement. It was the biggest win of your season because guess what? You not only you did beat the Cowboys ten to forty two at home. It's way different going to the hostile environment that is Philadelphia. I mean, I have let me let me take some three quarters. Make no, sure let me take some real quick. I go to a few Eagles games a year usually on on the regs. Okay. And I had people from I'm from the Midwest that asked me, literally, hey, me and my wife or my kids were thinking about going to the Eagles game. Is it safe to go to the city? Like, it, what's it? I'm like, first off, I'm not from Philadelphia. So, but what I'll say is this: it's not what it's all hyped to be. Like, you're not gonna get, you know, drug through the streets by by your by your toenails. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not like that. Just as long as you stay in your land and don't don't do anything crazy, it's a regular game. But what I'll say is this. It's known to be a very hostile place to play. And the fact that you guys came to Philadelphia and did that against the number one team in the NFL, yes, that was your biggest win of the season. So, again, we can agree to disagree on that all day. That was your biggest win of the season by far. That that just that just completely changed your entire team's demeanor moving forward. You guys already knew you were good. You know, there, there, nobody, nobody was questioning that. Nobody was saying the 49ers are trash. Nobody was saying that you guys weren't going to make the playoffs or anything like that. You guys were going to win your division. We all knew that. Anybody who 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 knows football knew that the Niners were were going to be good. You guys beat the Cowboys. That's a big win, okay? You guys are going to win your division, like I just said, and you just beat the Eagles. That right there just completely changed the entire image of your team moving forward. Now, how you fare with that in the playoffs, that's what really matters, which is why, you know, Kevin and I, we're going to take someone on the chin and we're going to move forward. 100%. Playoffs matter. Not this shit that happened in regular season. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I, I still will eat it. We did talk a lot of big talk, and there's nothing that needs to be said. But this was definitely you guys' best one. Before I pass it off to you, Sean, everyone knows Sean and I have a $100 bet. The whole game, you can ask my wife. I'm sitting there like this. What was it? Look up on ESPN. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? We're getting our ass kicked. That's the last thing I need is to see Sean Holko request for Apple Pay. That would have sent me off, and I don't think I would have shown my face on Monday. <laughs> but you know what? I'll just take one ass for him. And Sean beat me in fantasy because Christian Kirk got hurt. So Sean owns. Yeah. Kevin this week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess so. Uh, but uh, Kevin Dent Sr. wants to know is that an Eagles jersey, son? No, it's not an Eagles jersey, but also our guy James said, no Eagles jersey today, Kev. And also for, like for everyone. Jersey. <laughs> so we just, wore just jersey for, last week. No shades, no Eagles jersey, nothing. Shades so was just, total last season. And just for our uh, audience to know before we pass it over to Javon to, to drop the mic, uh, Kaz has already paid up uh, his end of the bet. He tagged us all in a, in a video that you can see on Twitter. Um, and it's still up right now. I thought it was going to be up for maybe a couple hours and then he was going to take it down, but props to Kaz still up over 24 hours later. I even screenshot you, uh, with the 49ers Jersey on Kaz, you were just muted. So I didn't hear what you said. Um, man, I'm a word, man, I'm a word, man, man, I'm a word. And we, we appreciate that. Um, and so for, for our audience, um, just know that Kevin will be paying up his end of the bet, but we're going to wait a couple weeks until he's back home in Sacramento for all of us together uh, for Kevin to be wearing that Jersey. And if Brandon Ayuk sets the, or if Brandon Ayuk surpasses a thousand yards on the season, by the time that we have that episode, I'm going to be spending the hundred dollars. Kevin's going to give me 
and combining it with the $20 I won from another Eagles fan this weekend. And then the $20 that I took from uh, actually $40 that I took from two Cowboys fans uh, weeks ago. So the NFC East could buy me a Brandon Ayuk jersey. So I appreciate all of you for that. Anyways, Tony, hey, you have been very <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I'm already sixty dollars in. Now I just need Brandon Ayuk to get another. Like, I'm gonna knock on wood because injuries do happen, and he has played over eleven games now. Um, but you know, I I, I feel very confident because, as Kevin was saying, he was checking the the stats nonstop throughout the game. Brandon Ayuk's like a hundred yards away from hitting a thousand, so he's one big game away from uh, getting Kevin to run me my money. Uh, as I was saying, Javon, you were you have been very patient. We heard from the two Eagles fans on the panel. And so now let's hear from you as we celebrate this Victory Monday together, you and I. Oh, tough week for Kev, you know. Duke loses. Ohio State gets jumped to the playoff. And then to top it all off, he was like, Daddy, I can't go out like this on Sunday, man. I can't go out like this. You know, we go – it's the Niners coming to the lake. This is this is easy work, man. 42 to 19. Eagles couldn't even put up 20 points. I mean, just going into the game, you know, Vegas tried to tell everybody. Niners minus two and a half early. Like the line was set on Monday, like mon- like the day of our podcast that we shot last week. The Niners were favored going into it. And I was like, huh. Well, Vegas is trying to tell everybody that the Niners were better than the Eagles. Well, maybe the line will move by, you know, Friday. You know, maybe somebody start coming in on the Eagles a little bit. Maybe the line might shift. No, the, the line actually goes up to three points. And I'm just like, wow, there's no way this cannot go on the hotline. So, obviously, you know, if you guys did follow, the hotline went 5-1 and one last week. Another winning week. Um, and the last game on it was the Niners-Eagles game. And, you know, just Trent Williams said it best. I mean, we had a quarterback this time. <laughs> so, I mean, when you, when you do, we have a running back playing, court, throwing the ball, we have a running back throwing the ball in the NFC Championship game, you don't got a shot. You don't have a snowball chance in hell. And even for, you know, Josh Johnson to get knocked out in that game, that was just – I mean, I didn't even think we had a chance then. But – for ultimately, it was Purdy went out. We never really had a shot. And Debo was, you know, the guy. And Brandon Ayuk, our two, you know, star receivers, um, were pretty much the catalyst of the movement of the whole entire offseason. That if Brock Purdy wouldn't have gotten hurt, we would have won that game handily, pretty easily. And, you know, I didn't really have a doubt in my mind that we would win this game. It was just the wide margin was just, it was. It was filling. It was very fulfilling. Um, it was very much needed. This is pretty much what would have happened in the NFC Championship last game, and we just had to come back and prove it again. Um, you know, when you got guys like Trent Williams, guys like Debo Samuel, George Kittle, um, Chris McCaffrey um, rushed for 114 yards. You know, the Eagles, they're known for, you know, rushing the ball pretty well, 46 yards rushing. DeAndre Swift, non-factor. Kenneth Gainwell, non-factory. I think your best rusher was Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. <laughs> he had 20 yards rushing and a touchdown. Um, I mean, they needed our line, our star linebacker, Dre Greenlaw, to get ejected for them to actually score a touchdown in the second half. Um, but a security guard, Big Dom, I guess, is like a guy that's well-known in the city, community, Philly. Like Everybody knows him. Pushes Dre Greenlaw. And then Dre Greenlaw retaliates, and then he gets ejected. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to have to eject the security guard. He's getting ejected out of the game. But you guys are going to lose your left, your outside linebacker. That was fucking ridiculous, in my opinion. I honestly couldn't believe that was even thought of, of even happening. I get the Dre Greenlaw deserves a penalty. He's known for slamming niggas on his head multiple times during a game. He's good for at least one personal foul. Every single game. I get that. But for him to get thrown out of the game was complete madness. And then you have Nick Sirianni trying to talk shit to everybody during the game. And then he's heard at the end of the game, hey, man, I'm saying, I'm sorry, man. You, 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 yeah, we belt to ass is what happened. And, you know, I'm trying to text Kevin throughout the entire game. 
And I'm, I'm going to read a couple of text messages just throughout the game. Because Unfortunately, he does this. I, he texts me every week, and I don't oh, respond no, 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 during no, 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 text no, no, messages, during football this, games. I wasn't hiding. I don't respond was, any week. Yeah, no. You know, Kevin, this was this was a different week for him. So, you know, I was just trying to make sure, you know, he, he texts me early in the morning, you know, just trying to get what my record was. Just trying to make sure what was going on, you know, and I and Kev knows that I'm up early, parlaying, trying to figure out what I'm gonna bet on every day. He's trying to make sure, you know, everything's right with the content. This is what's going on. We we need to make sure everything's good. I'm like, all right, you know, let me go ahead. I'm gonna build this, and so I'm just gonna read a couple of text messages just early. This is two twenty five. I'm just saying, hey, we on y'all ass, Kev. All caps. We on y'all ass. System QB B A. The Great White Hope. That is Christian McCaffrey, if people do not know who that is. And then I'm saying y'all in trouble. Y'all got to cover CMC, too, because y'all forgot that he's not just a guy. He can line up in the slot. Y'all forgot that. Um, I'm on your ass, Kev. Debo MF Samuel. Can y'all turn this shit up, like, for real? Because we need a challenge. This is something, like, this is when it's, like, 35-13. Like, can y'all score, please? Like, I'm. y'all got to give me something. Show some life. And then I said, y'all needed that, huh? That was when Trey Greenlaw gets ejected out of the game. So these are like little, these are cool little timestamps of what's going on throughout the game. And these are all, if you guys have iPhones, you know, when you send a text message, it's all blue. So if you if you scroll through me and Kev's conversation, it's all blue. There's no response, like no response whatsoever. So I was like, y'all needed that, huh? And I was like, we go score anyway. And then I said, we standing on business. Debo really liked that. We really liked that. And then to top it all off, the stink in the link. That's what the name <laughs> of this game is going to be called. The stink in the link. I'm going to shout out my cousin. He gave me, Marcellus gave me that one. The stink in the link is what the game, what this game will be remembered as. And, you know, I was, I was really disappointed. I thought this game would have been a little bit closer. I figured we won by double digits, but I didn't think we would win by fucking 20 points, three touchdowns. Like, A.J. Brown got the majority of his yards on those first couple of drives. I was like, damn. When A.J. caught those first two, like, slants over the middle, and I was like, damn. I kind of reverted back to a couple years ago when he was on Tennessee and he torched us for, like, seven for 150. And I was like, damn, is he going to, like, torch us the entire game? And then I'm like, all right. So uh, I was like, Devontae Smith's a a guy. And then I, I didn't really fear them like that as the game kind of went on because we were getting pressure on the quarterback. Kev was like, Oh, Jalen George is slipping on his shoelaces. And I'm just like, <laughs> if you kind of look at it, we got a lot of like, most of our sacks were coverage sacks because Jalen had nowhere to go with the ball. And you got to give props to guys like Mooney Ward, um, uh, Diamondor Lenore, who almost knocked out Deandre Swift at the end of the game. Uh, Ambry Thomas played well. Uh, Jair Brown was making plays, our backup safety, backup rookie safety, by the way, because our all-pro safety is out with a torn ACL. And then you got, you know, guys on the other end, like Darius Slay, James Bradbury, getting exposed all throughout the defense. And I thought Kevin Byard would have been, you know, a factor in this game because, oh, yeah, we got Kevin Byard. And, you know, Kevin was calling me through. I remember when y'all traded for Kevin Byard. And I was like, oh, that's a solid pickup. Didn't really see him too much. I mean, Purdy threw for 315 and four touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. He's the – I don't know if y'all know, Brock Purdy is now the leader for odds to be MVP. I don't know. Ahead of Jalen Hurts. Did you – leads the league in passer rating and first in this category, air yards. Like, it's just – Stats over politics, right, guys? It's the name of the show. So I'm just, yeah, I, I, when you got guys like, you know, Purdy coming in and Trent Williams is over there. I was, I was waiting for somebody to try Trent or somebody try to come at Trent so Trent could slam somebody on his neck again because that's what happened, you know, last year. And then I, you know, Cass said and Kevin, they're kind of downplaying like all oh, you. Yeah. Looking to the standings, the standard. We're the number one team, and you guys got to come on back. Y'all don't want us to come back to the link. <laughs> I'm going to say this right Please don't speak for us. Please y'all don't do speak not first. want us to come back. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that, bro. Don't do that, y'all bro. Do not, I am, man. I might as well, I'm telling y'all right now. 
Y'all do not want us to come back. Don't make me come back. <laughs> Don't make me. I'm telling y'all right now, man. Right now, I feel like this is kind of where the skid is. I don't think the gauntlet's over. I feel like this is kind of just the beginning of, all right, hey, Cowboys are looking at home like, hey, they're a little wounded. Maybe they're not as good as we thought they were because, you know, Dak stepped out of bounds, and, you know, the two-point conversion, and <laughs> don't make us come back. Um, I think they're a little – I think it's – it's in their head now because you know this was a this was a big game for them, right? This was the oh, this is a rematch, and if she they ain't gonna come into our house, we beat them thirty eight to whatever last year, and this was gonna happen. And I think that game kind of set the like, are we as good as we really think that we are? Are we supposed to be when we're winning all of these games? You know, going into overtime with Buffalo and having to come back down ten against KC. And, you know, squeaking away with the win against Dallas Cowboys. That shit was not gonna happen to us. <laughs> we not the we not the Buffalo Bills. We are not Kansas State. We not we I told y'all last week, we get a 10 point lead, it's over. <laughs> we are gonna put our foot on you guys' neck and it's going to be a wrap. Debo Samuel. All-purpose yards, he had 130 yards. Really felt like he had like 250 yards plus. It felt like that. If you would have looked at the stat, you would have just never looked at the stat sheet. A lot of people would have been like, what did Debo have, like 180? <laughs> had two touchdowns receiving, you know, on a rushing touchdown because, you know, he kept not a number one receiver. not a number one receiver. He's not a real wide receiver. He's not this and that. And, you know, I don't know, man. It's just I heard a lot of talking just from – the playoff game last year and <laughs> you know it's just it's re, it's it's very relieving because it kind of just validates of what all Niner fans already thought was really gonna happen um it just took you know a little bit under a year and some change 11 uh, months Toddy yeah. you, you I just gotta just chip in here to say like we've been hearing a lot of talk we've been hearing this for 11 months 11 months yeah, from so the guy from, from the guy right next to me. We've been hearing this for 11 months. The same guys that said that the Eagles would win on Sunday 38 to 7. 38 Go ahead, to Toddy. Seven. Yeah, 38 to 7. Um you guys forgot that Christian McCaffrey was a problem as well. Um That's I guess Brock good. Purdy is I guess Brock Purdy's still a system quarterback. He's I don't know. I don't know if he's going to win the MVP, but he's the, he's the favorite right now. So I'm just, it's, <laughs> You guys are statistically have the best record in the league right now. Y'all ain't the best team in the league. Come on now, man. You guys know that. Y'all know that. Said. You are what your record says, right? Y'all ain't the best team in the league. We're we're better than you guys. So I gotta no, disagree. I gotta disagree with one thing you league. said. There's nobody in the league that's better than the San Francisco 49ers right now. I gotta nobody. I gotta I gotta disagree nobody with one thing you said. The, nobody's in the we are in a different <laughs> class than anybody else. That you could Kansas City just dropped a laid an egg in Green Bay last week. You know, you got the the Eagles were supposed to be the team, right? You know, because there's so much talent and it's this, that, and the third. I watched Lane Johnson jump off sides like 18 times <laughs> last night. And that's not even <laughs> that's just one of the many things that was just so wrong with the Eagles last night. And those DBs, man, Debo's living in their heads rent free. See, the Red thing fruit. is, the thing is, real quick, I'm going to say this. So you said, you know, this was a game, if I'm not mistaken, you said like something along the lines of, you know, you guys really wanted to win this game. This is a big game for you guys. No, this is a big game for you guys. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, no, listen. Again, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to always go More back deflection. to this. I'm going to go back to this every time because I'm, I'm going to take it this on the chin. another gonna, game for y'all. I'm going to take it on the chin. I'm going to take it on the chin. It wasn't, it wasn't in circle, Toddy. We got we got beat down. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say that every time before I make my points. We got beat down. We did 100. percent Came in there, popped us straight in the mouth, through the whole skull. Just wow. Yep. Here we are, 49ers. Bang bang, not a game. Whatever. Cool. But this wasn't a game. We already knew what it was. Listen, we know what it's gonna take to to get the first to number one seed. Okay, we're aware of that. The gauntlet's a gauntlet for a reason. We we knew that you know somewhere with the this gauntlet. It ain't, but the big a good chunk of it is, and we got one loss come out of it. I can live with that. Um, I mentioned There's another before, game next week. 
I ain't worried about them hoes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, so I'm saying, Ooh. listen. You know what? I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, my my girlfriend, she's uh she's in the bedroom. Someone says right now. I'm contemplating sneaking and going to that Dallas game. Um, so uh, <laughs> just know when I go to when I go to games, big big dog energy we bring. Yeah. It. So, anyways, uh, I don't know yet. But anyway, what I'm gonna say is this: is, is uh, um, you know. 10 and 2. How many teams right now, despite who they lost against, how they lost, would kill to be 10 and 2 right now? That's every team in the league except for who? The Philadelphia Eagles. And that's <laughs> that right. and that stat right there is the only stat that matters. It doesn't matter what your record is, who you lost to, or anything like that. That first round, that first round buy is everything. This is 17 weeks of the season. Okay. That's so ba- ba- now back in the day, back in the day, hey, hey, I hear you. Back in the day, right? 16 games of the season, you know what I'm saying? You know, you want to get the first round by cool. Seven an extra week, that adds a lot of stress on teams. And we're looking to go ahead and you know what? Let's get that extra week off and let these guys play in the wild card round and beat their teams up even more. And then come see us in the link again. I promise you this. You we we were not aware how personal it really was. We we, we came out. <laughs> no, hey, no, we came out with cold feet. We did. Come on, dude. We did. Don't put this off clip. Yeah, hey, hey, listen, no, listen, Ooh, listen, listen, word. listen, listen, Darius Slay out here tweeting, you know, in 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 uh, uh AJ Getting Brown, oh, fans, you know, you know, and shit. all <laughs> kinds of stuff, right? It's like, bro, listen, 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 <laughs> look, they nobody on the 49ers team, if I'm not mistaken, you know, can fact check me, was tweeting anything, it was strictly Debo saying, Yep, we're gonna we're gonna show up and handle business. That's 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 big dog energy, Line I think. That uh, shit up. In Philadelphia, low key, I think they were a little like, you know what? Hey, we at home, you know, we're gonna go in here. Oh, damn, it's raining, you know, weather's not Happy. ideal, and got a little comfortable, and that happens. It ha- it's happened to to multiple teams that or not teams, but multiple uh seasons that Tom Brady has been on these one Super Bowls. Where it's like, damn, you get the Patriots. Then all of a sudden they get they ass whooped by you know the Dolphins or some some team that have nobody's losing to. You know what I'm saying? It just happens, and it's happened a couple times this year alone with your team. With the Cowboys, with the Chiefs, and now with us, and we're ten and two. I promise you, and I mean this when it comes to Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles Nation, we are good. We are not tripping like well, yeah, how y'all think. Y'all want us to be tripping, but we're not. We're gonna take this one and move on. Don't let us go into Dallas and dog walk them because then it's wraps, and you don't want to see us in the playoffs. I'm gonna say it right now. You y'all don't want that. Like the season over. <laughs> it, 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 uh, y'all talk like you just won a Super Bowl. Y'all talk like y'all talk like you just won a Super Bowl. Me and Sean left here chilling, and y'all don't want us to come back. Oh, you know, Eagle fans do not want us to. <laughs> y'all do not want us. You don't to want to. You don't. Back. Hey, you don't want to see Jalen Hurts game seven. You don't want to see Jalen Hurts game seven. You do not want to see Jalen Hurts game seven. You don't want to see that. Why? Why is that, Kaz? Is that because Jalen Hurts is the comeback king? Man, because that he's Kobe reincarnated, baby. You know what? He's gonna take this. Watch, he's gonna take this, he's gonna learn from it, and you're gonna see what happened. You're gonna see. We right back there. Where, hey, we're gonna be right back where we started last year, where we ended last year. I'm sorry. We'll be right back there. Oh, losing the Super Bowl. It ain't gonna be yeah, like that. We're gonna be there. But we're gonna Tossing be there. Lobs. We're gonna be there. But let me tell you something. Remember this this win you guys got 42-19. You know, oh, us. we remember the win y'all got hey, last year. Hey, hey, listen, but listen, listen, real quick, real quick. We get it. 42-19, beat us in every relevant statistical category. Um, you know, most of our yards and, and stuff that happened with our, our skill position players. Garbage yards. You know, garbage, yep, garbage time. You know, we'll take that. I promise you, when it comes back to the link, this will not be the same Eagles team. Is it gonna that, be at the link though? That the attitude, it's sure oh, oh that? yeah, oh yeah. Are you sure about oh that? yeah. Hey, and the attitude, and the attitude, and the attitude is going to be miles different. So congratulations for you guys coming in and doing what you did. You know what? Stood on business. It just was not at the right time. Playoffs is what matters. Super Bowl appearances matters. And we're going to see you going to be there. It was crazy because Sirianni sharing videos of Debo in the offseason. This is what he said about you. This is what he was saying. You're going to let him come up into your house. And do this to you and take huh. your food off of Can't your defend plate. me, my brother. Defend me, my bro. Come on, bro. Defend me, man. That's what hey, he man. Was Look, this, you, hey, you got to have the day, day, man. He was like, yeah, sir. He was telling them this was, he was showing the videos throughout the week. Like, hey, man, you going to let him talk to you about that? 
you're gonna let them do that and then you got reporters after the game with slay going at them saying we're afraid to tackle dbs don't want to hit debo he's scared he's a mac truck man he's a he's, he's a cheetah built like a mac truck and you don't want to you don't want to tackle him and it, i don't know if y'all saw the little uh, inside the nfl he was like i was hauling ass on that one <laughs> Hey, man, I'll tell you what, Cab. If this was a phone call, I'd, I'd be all in, man. But we're, we got we got time limits and we got other topics to get into. But we can do this all day. But no, yeah. The one, like the captains are saying, what can Kevin say? It was it was their night. Better team won. We got to come in here. We got to take it. Like I said in my first part, we all knew this was a, a fight of two rounds, and you guys won the first one. So don't we'll let see the back boys. In, we'll, don't we'll let the boys look around and win on Sunday. Yeah. Hey, say it right. I'm gonna say it right. I do not like how. This week, Cowboys fans were Niner fans, and next week, Niner fans are Cowboy fans. Like, they beat the shit out of y'all, and y'all want to root for them? Blows my mind. Blows my mind. I'm with, I'm with, I'm with you. Here for either or. I'm with you, Kev, man. You know what? Like, like you know, other topics we got to get to or whatever, but at the end of the day, we're going to take this one and move on. It's, it's, it's that simple. Ain't no team that you guys know of in your in your lifetime that has gone, you know, one loss throughout the season, win the Super Bowl, two losses, or what you know, you going, you got you gotta take one. And we in the gauntlet right now, and we got our first one in the gauntlet. Woohoo! Congratulations. Hey, have your Super Bowl. I'll give you that. No salt. You guys, what? you guys came in and handled business. It was awesome. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I would love for that to happen. For, I mean, it, it's happened in the past, but I would like that <laughs> that feeling. How you feeling right now? That's a really good feeling, isn't it? It's a it's a great feeling. That's how we felt against New York. In in the uh, division round, and then that's how he fought against you guys in the NFC Championship game. Not just because you lost Brock Purdy, we just beat that ass all the way through. It was just it means it just was done. That's it, it's it's a good feeling. So enjoy it. Again, it just came at the wrong time. So you know what I'm saying. Remember this video and just make sure that when it comes to playoffs, you two are eating them words. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh yeah, we'll see y'all again. This is we'll be at we'll be out this time. So. We'll see y'all again. <laughs> I know we'll see them again, but it's just it's, we're gonna be at home this time. <laughs> it's not gonna they gotta go on the road and they'll you know they're gonna be in Santa Clara. That's so well, Kaz, I, I hope that you hold on to that NFC championship win for as long as you possibly can. Hope you, you too, even Kaz. bought a t-shirt. I have some NFC champion shirts that were followed up by a Super Bowl loss. I know it can be tough, but I, I hope you hold on to that for a long time because. It wasn't just 49ers fans who were saying that the NFC Championship win was basically invalidated. I even heard uh, Stephen A. Smith go on TV today, and he's a guy who is a Pittsburgh fan. I think he typically leans towards rooting for Pennsylvania. We know he hates the Cowboys, but he went as far to say that this win yesterday just completely erases that NFC Championship game completely because – even though Kaz said, oh, you know, we beat that ass. It wasn't just because Brock Purdy wasn't there. It was completely because Brock Purdy wasn't there. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to I'm not gonna go as far as some 49ers fans to say, oh, if Brock Purdy was in that NFC Championship game, they win 42 to 19. I don't think that happens. I think it's a close game. I personally, maybe it's my bias, but I personally think the 49ers would have won that NFC Championship game in a close game, but I don't think it would have been a blowout. And But also, you know, it kind of does erase and invalidate the NFC Championship win. It's because we got Javon Hargrave. That's why we won. Or, so or Chase can't, Young. We can't erase it when the banner still hangs. Oh, well, that's cute that you guys hang NFC Championship banners. We got oh, five Super Bowl banners. We don't We don't have room for NFC I'm Championship banners. Guy. Or Kittle uh, or Debo. Okay, we were all the team hey, was black. How and many? How many do I have since uh, since I was born, you. Kevin? Zero. Okay, Zero. Guess what? Doesn't matter. You see that right there? 49ers awesome. 55 to 10. <laughs> four for four. Yep. They went to four straight Super Bowls. Actually, five straight Super Bowls. Oh, and right. they won them all. They didn't have a loss up until 2013 when they lost to the Ravens in the Super Bowl. Life as a 49ers fan has been tough for Javon and I, born in 1998. But guess what? This is the year that they win a Super Bowl in our lifetime. So then Eagles fans can no longer say, oh, don't talk to me. You haven't seen your team win a Super Bowl in your life. Don't talk to me. Well, guess what? It's going to happen this year. And you guys keep talking about, oh, every team in the NFL would rather be 10-2 and two than whatever their record is. That is correct. 
But the 49ers, they got the next best thing. They're nine and three, and they not only have a tiebreaker on the Eagles, they also have a tiebreaker on the Cowboys with that head to head win. So, regardless of what happens next week, yeah, as 49ers fans, we are rooting for Dallas because we want to reclaim that number one seed and make it easy. And so, yeah, as James said, oh, for sure. We're Cowboys fans this Hold week. Up. And we the boys. His, his his brother, his brother Julian said, I love I love to see the Eagles fall. And so yeah, Kevin, all of us are collectively hating on the Eagles. On together. Deshaun Jackson and Day, though. It was Deshaun on, De- on Deshaun Jackson, Jackson Day. Day. Uh and so I just wanted to touch on a couple things that uh that haven't been mentioned so far. I know that uh Kevin mentioned at the very beginning how after the end of the first quarter, the Eagles were up six zero because they couldn't take advantage of their red zone opportunities while the 49ers they later on did as the 49ers scored a touchdown in six consecutive drives. But that first quarter, it was rough. The Niners had negative six total yards at the end of the first quarter. They had two, they had the ball for two minutes and three seconds while the Eagles had it for nearly 13 minutes and the 49ers averaged negative one yard of play. And so what did they do? They woke up, they scored a touchdown in six consecutive possessions as Javon mentioned uh Debo Samuel had himself a game the phrase that keeps being said is stood on business he wore all black going into that game and uh a stat that I thought was really cool is Debo Samuel is the only wide receiver in NFL history to make a pro bowl or an all pro team when having more career rushing touchdowns than receiving touchdowns and so that just continues to prove how versatile Debo is I absolutely love to see it Brock Purdy, as has been mentioned, he is now the front runner to win MVP. That's just because it's a quarterback award at this point. I'm not going to be advocating for Brock Purdy as the MVP because I think Christian McCaffrey should be the MVP. Like until they just call it the quarterback award or say the award is only for quarterbacks and they actually come out and say it, it's already understood. But until the NFL actually just says point blank, it's a quarterback award, I'm going to continue to advocate for Christian McCaffrey in this season. But Brock Purdy, he started yesterday's game over four. And he ends up finishing the game 19 of 23 for 314 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions, handed the Eagles their first home loss. And as Javon mentioned earlier, he ranks first in several categories. Brock Purdy is first in passer rating, completion percentage, touchdowns, uh, two attempts, yards per attempts, and yards uh, for completions. And so Brock Purdy... Yeah, I guess he. I guess he's just a system quarterback. Brock Purdy. He continued to show how great he truly is. Um, and you know, in these games, the 49ers have dominated the NFC East, and I just absolutely love to see it. Christian McCaffrey. He became the first 49er since 2014 to surpass over a thousand rushing yards on the season. First to do it since Frank Gore. And uh, the the other thing that hasn't been mentioned is that. The 49ers beat the Eagles so bad, Javon, that they went out and signed Shaq Leonard today. So congratulations <laughs> to the Eagles for that. Uh, they need Kevin, reinforcements. <laughs> Kevin, you remember you remember uh, how I acted Don't after the Eagles shit. lost in the Super Bowl? I'm going to consider this Sean Light for right now because as both you and Kaz have mentioned, it doesn't truly matter until the playoffs come. One of our teams could get eliminated before the NFC Championship game. But all of us and many other people believe that this will be the rematch in the NFC Championship game. And so until that happens, I'm going to reserve to say anything else. All I wanted to do was point out like 10, 15 times, maybe make it 16. Hey, guys, did you know that Kevin said that the Eagles would win this game 38 to 7? And they ended up losing by 23 points. And everyone, uh, Kaz, you and I, we can we can lean over to the left Javon and uh, Kevin, you can just lean over to the right. This was the screenshot that I spoke of <laughs> earlier as here is Kaz, a bet's a bet. It's whatever. See us when it matters. Wrong, we appreciate you for fulfilling your bet, Kaz. And uh, some people might have seen this viral image of a 49ers fan in Philly uh, at the game yesterday. And, you know, I just had to break out some of my terrible Photoshop skills one more time and just say, you know, I think, ah, uh, oh, damn, clicked it one too many times. I think this is my mood. Uh, for, for those of you who are on YouTube, Twitter, well, it's called X now, and Twitch, that was my mood yesterday. Just love it. 49ers fan among all the crying Jordan Eagles fans. Cry, Eagles cry. And uh, you know, Kevin, all offseason, I was telling you, we'll see you week 13. Now you saw what happened. 
We'll see you again in the NFC Championship game. They got to get there. I don't know if they, they got to make it. They gotta, I'm they gotta happy it wasn't a picture of my face over A.J. Brown. Yeah. I was looking forward to it all day. Yeah, so. Well, remember, I said this is Sean Light. Let's wait till the okay. NFC Championship game. Don't lose to the Saints in the divisional round. That's all I'm going to say. Toddy, like I said last year, real football doesn't start till they wilding, the bro. They wilding. They wilding, bro. You got to let them have their day, bro, because we would have done the same thing. Hey, Kaz, so this is day. just – Kaz, just so you know, that's that's me taking it light. So uh, I hope I hope we have you back on after the 49ers beat the Eagles in the NFC Championship. Hey man, look like any, anybody who follows me, here's how I talk. You know my YouTube, my Twitter. Just know I'm with it. So hey, I love everything about this. Kev said it best. This is y'all's day, man. This is y'all's day. It's, it's it's that simple. It's that simple. We we appreciate it. And, the boys, and I just they seen what we did to y'all. The boys are coming, and and I all all uh, all smack talk aside, I just want to say genuinely to both you, Kevin and Kaz, uh, thank you for for showing up. I've had friends that like say that they're gonna show up after their team loses, and then they don't, and I lose respect for those kind of people. And so, just shout out to both of you uh, for for being here today, taking it on the chin um, as the stand up men that I know you both are. And uh, I just want to say I appreciate it, and uh, we'll we'll see you in the NFC Championship game. There, there's a lot left. I don't know done. if they're gonna get there. We gotta make we we In gotta make, cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's. <laughs> make sure that they. Hey. We'll uh, no, I'll, I'll say right, this. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this respectfully, respectfully, respectfully. Right? No, like being 100 percent honest. Um, the ass whooping that we suffered the other day. Okay. That's one. Of the, that's one. Of, that's one of them ones where it's like you know what, man. You, you are, we probably all seen Friday, Sean. I don't know you that well, but I know that Toddy seen. I, I know. I have, <laughs> I don't, I'm I have, not trying I to have seen Friday. All right, my <laughs> man, my man. Hey, you win some, all, all three of them. You lose some, but you live. You live to fight another day, my boy. Hey, this is one of them situations, man. It's simple as that. Love to you, Sean. Real shot, real talk, bro. Love to you, man. I, I appreciate it, Kaz. I am very uncultured most of the time, but I have actually seen Friday. I've seen uh, next Friday. I've seen Friday after next. And uh, all of those, I would say as a collection, cinematic masterpiece. And so, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that you mentioned that as well. And by the all way, right, so special, before we before we end, this goes out. This is for Manny. I'm looking at the camera right here. I'm coming <laughs> to collect on Sunday. Mm. I'm coming to collect on Sunday, Manny. Play Seattle. If you guys, it's a well-documented bet that we got going on, that the Niners were going to sweep Seattle. And all really, you guys are coming on down to Levi's, coming on down to the Bay Area. Just know the Niners are 12 and a half point favorite in that game. So I don't know if you know what, what's going to be, what's going to be, what's foreshadowed that's going to happen on Sunday. So just, you know, I'll request it. I'll probably request it to you after the show's over just to make sure that you have all my information. But just want to let you know I'm coming to collect on Sunday. And well, Eagles, and I. For- Go ahead. Don't fuck around on Sunday. Don't get cute. Handle business. Right. Nah, I, I think I think they woke up. I I, th- I think that they definitely woke up. And uh, for we'll for see. our audio only listeners, I highlighted a comment from uh, from Amber and that says "bang bang" because Niner gang. Uh, but I, I wanted to highlight that comment as Javon was talking about Manny, just because at least there's one person in the Anderson household who knows which team to root for. Maybe maybe Manny will will learn eventually. Uh, but Let's move on here on episode number 66 of Stats Over Politics because Kevin said to me earlier, I don't want to be talking about this game for an hour with you and Javon and Kaz. All right, well, we made it 53 minutes in, and so I'm going to honor Kevin's request, and, and we're going to we're gonna end it here. As uh, Javon just mentioned, both of our division rivals who played each other this past week on Thursday in what was probably the most exciting Thursday night football game they might have ever had on Prime, um, definitely this season, as the Cowboys beat the Eagles 41 to 35 with this loss, Javon, the 49ers gain another game in the standings against the Seahawks. As you were uh, mentioning there, Um, it seems like the 49ers are about to wrap up the division. And for, for you guys as Eagles fans, Kaz and Kevin, the Cowboys, they remain in the hunt for the NFC East title. You both may believe that there's no shot.